back at working on the motor. I've just taken away the fuel return line. Oh, don't use this as a, a reference for you to uh, find out how to fix diesel motors. I'm just sort of experimenting here. Uh, I can't remember if we put in the footage um, when we were traveling across the Gulf of Mexico. We noticed when we took all the injectors out that number three injector was all black around the seat of it and um, we didn't quite know you know why is it the cylinder uh, is it the uh, injector so what we did is we switched number three with number one number one and two were clean and we've run it for a few hours I think we've run it for 25 hours coming into Rio Dolce and I'm just gonna see if now the number one which is now in number three so just seeing if number one injector is all blackened and if that's the case then I'm thinking it's um, something to do with the cylinder piston God knows what and uh, we'll narrow it down that way I don't know if that's wise but we're gonna do it nonetheless all right so fuel returns been removed uh, Oh, some tests that I've been doing so it's been uh, blow it's been burning about a quarter of a liter so I, I guess that's about a quart in American terms um, every 20 to 25 hours. Now this is a Yamaha and it hasn't had, it doesn't have many hours on it at all so I'm thinking that's a bit too much. So I'm thinking um, either there's something wrong with the rings or there's something wrong with valves. So um, and also there's the problem with the injector. Now uh, maybe they're related, I don't know. So it's all discovery here folks. Got to learn somewhere and somehow now it might be that um, the reason why it was blackened it wasn't seated properly now I remember when we were doing this I was doing the fuel tank and Tim was doing this and he can't quite remember if um, these holding studs or well, these nuts were tight or not I think I recall him saying they might have been a bit loose well if that's the case maybe that's why it's all blackened there so I'm just going to take off all of these little nuts and um, take out the fuel lines. They're all loose. And um, then we'll have a look, eh? Now, Margarita has asked me to do a voiceover here. Um, basically, uh, I can't remember what I'm doing, but I think I'm loosening the fuel lines. And there's two studs on a, on a and there's a bracket that's yeah. holding in the ejector. So I'm simply removing those two studs and the fuel line so I don't bust the fuel line. Here we go, we've already got one of the injectors out. So uh, there you go. So this was number three. As you can see, it's still a bit blackened. That's because it was, well, it's not number one, but it was from number three. So, all right, so let's now check out number one, well, the old number one um, injector and see if it's also blackened like this. Okay, out comes number three. Well, it's a little bit blackened, but certainly not much as much as the old number three, but maybe because it's only been 25 hours. And a source of reference, we're going to take out number two, which should be as clean as a whistle. That's number two. Which is pretty clean. So maybe there is something wrong with number three. I think I better go see the local mechanic and see what's happening. Okay, this is Walter here. He's helped me do a few modifications to the alternator because the alternator, although it says 50 amps, is barely giving me 14 amps. What, you took, what, what? <laughs> you took, sorry, no. He took off his fine piece of uh, hatware. No, 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 when I was in charging, it was only giving me 14 amps. The voltage is also the problem because the voltage, uh, the regulator is cutting out at 14 volts and. And Walter 
has helped me install two uh, two diodes, which theoretically tricks the alternator, and it actually reads the voltage at what 15.2. So it'll actually charge the 15.2. And lo and behold, when we do that, we're actually getting 30, 40 amps. We were oh, and out of the alternator, which is what I actually want, because I barely, I never got 20 amps out of it, even though it's 50 amp rating. So um, we're just tricking the system. Anyway, Walter's well, going to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yet we just we we we, uh, we put a every diode you put in between the regulator and the uh, the, uh, and the brushes. Router brushes. Yeah, is 0.6. Normally it's 0.6 of a volt uh, voltage drop. So it increases the uh, output voltage by 0.6 of a volt. So we put in so two. We put in two because points uh, because fourteen point six is not enough to charge uh, big uh, lead acid batteries. Yeah, and we got big at big ass batteries. We should be here. charging up to sixteen fourteen point eight. Yeah, and uh, so we've got an alarm on it when the voltage reaches fourteen point eight volts. Well, we will have an alarm. Currently, the alarm is me. We all know what's going to happen there, people. We're going to have automatic alarm. So. Yeah. Peter and Margarita now is now going to turn off before the smoke comes off the LED, That's right. the LED but, batteries. But thank you very much, Walter. Top stuff. So what we've done is we just pulled it apart. Um, and what are we doing? You clean it up. Okay, we first remove these. There's four of them. Then... Just ease it off with a hammer, or just pull it off. And this is what Walter was talking about. We cut the circuit between the brushes and the regulator, and we've installed two wires, yellow and black, and they go to two diodes to trick the system. Also, whilst we got Walter here, are we still filming? and get his hat on, get his <laughs> thinking hat on. We're not actually, we had a smart MPPT controller, but it's a whole lot of shit. Sorry, it's a whole lot of beep, and it's not working. So Walter, for the last 30 years, has been going straight from his solar panels, provided they're, what, uh, short, not short. 18 volts. We're about 18 volts when they're loaded up. Yeah, under load. Under load, so provided they're that and they're not 30s, um, he just hooks them straight to the batteries and he's never had a drama. Well, and connected via a voltage sensing relay so we can turn off at 14.8 uh, volts. Right, yeah, so, well, I don't have that again, but I'll be doing that. The, relay, the, 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 uh, the uh, voltage sensing relay is $32 yeah. and just need a small uh, relay for it, which is probably uh, $10. Right, okay. But you don't need an MPPT or an MPT. Yeah. controller for that which sets you back a hundred or yeah. three hundred dollars yeah so we're not going to do well, well i'm going to do what walter says and we'll see how that pans out so i'm um, saving a bit of money here all righty so when the bot burns i change my whatsapp <laughs> <laughs> ah it's darkness here i can't remember if i've told you but we lost two hard drives we lost uh seven or eight completed videos um, and I'm just trying to fill in some of the data. Uh, we have most of the data, but some of the files have been lost, so bear with us. Uh, I'm just filling in some of the videos here. Uh, I'm just looking at the video now, just to remind me. Um, so basically, uh, a word about MPPT. Look, from my very, very meager understanding of this, um, what it does is this. If you've got Power equals V times I, which is voltage times current. So let's just say we had 100 watts. And let's say the voltage was 20 volts. Therefore, the current should be, with the sun directly overhead, if it's solar, should be 5 amps, because 20 times 5 is 100, which would be 100 watts. Now, the thing is, what they're saying with maximum, uh, with MPPT, is... Your voltage is wasted beyond the 14 volts to the 18 volts uh, because it's charging at 14 volts. Therefore, between 14 and 18 is 4 volts, and let's just say it's um, 5 amps. Then 4 times 5 is 20. So out of the 100 watts, you're losing 20 watts. So you're losing 20%. So what apparently 
MPPT does, and it might do it. My system doesn't do it. It, it does it poorly. In fact, it does all things poorly. Uh, it's probably just cheap Chinese rubbish, although I didn't buy the cheapest. Uh, surprise, surprise. So the MPPT thing does this. Instead of using the 18 volts, and because power is V times I, it drops the voltage from 18 to whatever the charging is, which is around 14 or 14.8, certainly not in my system, it's pretty low. So it drops that voltage and it increases the current so the power is still the same. So just to give you an example, let's say we had the 100 watts. And let's say it was a 20 volts and 5 amps, so 20 times 5 is 100. So instead of that 20, let's say it drops it down to 14. So 20 times 5 amps gives you the 100 watts. But it drops that 20 volts, even though it's 18, just make it 20 because it's easy. It drops that down to say 14, and the current is not 5 amps now, but it's 7, because 7 times 14 is 98, which is close enough. So it increases the current, so then you get uh, more charge into the battery. But what Walter, Walter's been cruising for like 26 years, and he's had MPPT, and he's co uh, connected plain voltage panel, panels, solar panels, and MPPPT. Oh, that's three Ps. MPPT. And he hasn't noticed any difference. So it might be a bit of bullshit. Especially when you're spending up to three, four hundred dollars for a good MPPT controller. So I think, uh, and um, my friend Walter, he's Australian by the way, with a German accent, go figure, he is an electrician and he does all the wiring and he knows, and he's always got his solder out. So I would err on the side of someone that's been cruising for 26 years and never had a problem. And he says it, MPPT might be slightly better, but it's just certainly not worth it. Anyway, uh, now I wanna mention, uh, everyone was making comments about what was wrong with the outboard. Well. Uh, basically, it was the rings. The trouble is, so someone cooked the motor and they ran the motor and probably scored the cylinder walls as well, so we needed quite a bit of work done to it. And the work, it, look, it's problematic in Central America to get any work done. But the real problem is getting parts in. It will be six weeks to eight weeks, and we're never in a place for that long. So. Thank you for all your words of wisdom. Yes, we did the carby. We did the carby so many times, not funny. Um, compression was good on a cold engine, but as soon as it got warm, it just fell to nothing. So it was clearly the rings, and uh, we just couldn't do anything about it because we couldn't get the parts. So what we did is we traded it in, the, the, the motor went in with the dinghy that didn't hold air, and we got a dinghy that was pretty old, but it did hold air. But it was, at least it was a rigid modem. So we're considering ourselves lucky just to get that deal because the person we uh, did the trade-off with, they live in um, Rio Dolce and they have plenty of time to fix the motor. So it was a win-win for both parties. Um, so anyway, thank you for all your words of wisdom. Uh, that's the, that's the, um, the problem in a nutshell though. All right, well look. Good on you for uh, making comment. Thank you very much for watching and all things good. We'll see you next week. All right. See ya.